everybody. Dave here from New to You Speakers. In honor of these now beautiful Sirwin Vega uh, E208s, I'm wearing my Sirwin Vega red salmon colored shirt today. And uh, I think you all recognize the classic look of the Sirwin Vega. Um, this is the final state. We'll take you back in time uh, in this video and we'll show you what they look like when we got them. Got a couple still images there. I'll pick them up at a local flea market and um, show you what we've done to them. We've got a little a brief little clip about uh, how to do the final gluing of the foam surround onto the baskets and I think you'll find that um, informative as well. It's a little tip that I use and to make sure we don't have any rubbing on the voice coil. And then uh, as part of our normal video series, we like to do a little tutorial history of the company that we're looking at. In this case, Sirwin Vega has a, a very interesting and rich history and uh, there's a lot of information about it. So we'll just give you a few interesting tidbits and uh, that will allow you to um, enjoy these a little bit more. And then uh, these will be passed on to somebody who will really enjoy them. Uh, and we'll be putting these up for sale next. All right. Have a watch and hope you enjoy. Here they are. You can see uh, age has taken its toll on the foams. There was a little cabinet touch up with a Sharpie. Uh, here's the backside label, E208. Um, the grills were fine in the front. And um, as I said, just a little Sharpie work to touch up the black vinyl. The, this is a halfway done. I had completed removing all of the um, glue and the old foam, and I've got one of them partly done. Uh, here you can see the one is complete, and then we'll pick it up there when we finish the final one. Here's the iconic look. Um, is there any speaker more recognizable than the Sirwin Vega with the, uh, the red foam surrounds. You know, Klipsch is trying to do something similar now with their gold titanium cones, and it's probably working, actually. But, uh, you know, there's uh, 65 years of history or so here with Sirwin Vega. So there's quite a bit of information about Sirwin Vega. Um, and uh, this is a, a website that I found uh, from Sweden. They copy a lot of stuff right from the Sirwin Vega uh, website itself and from Wikipedia. Uh, there's the man, Gene Sirwinski, and uh, kind of reminds me a little bit of John Belushi, uh, aerospace engineer by training, and uh, had, a, had a day job doing that, and a night job he wanted to make better audio. and. Uh, he set out on a course for doing that, and he did it. Um, you know, one of their claims to fame was a very high-powered amplifier that they and speaker system that they came out with um, back in the in the uh, late '50s and early '60s. Um, they won many technical awards, and you can see uh, probably one of the more noteworthy ones uh, where they won an, an Oscar was for the movie Earthquake. And they put uh, what they called sense around, which were really extremely large bass subwoofers in movie theaters. Um, and they obviously went off at the right times when the earthquake was happening. I have not seen the movie myself, so that might be something I'll check out sometime to see what happened. I suspect you have to uh, have your, your sub turned up uh, to really get the full effect. Uh, I found an interesting note on another um, web page that said several years after the movie came out and was in the theaters, uh, they actually had to go around and uninstall the sense around system because many movie theaters were damaged by the resonances that were taking place as a result of, of uh, you know, what happened from playing that movie at the levels they did. Uh, and 
then of course uh, they got into the music business as well not just the home business but the music business and there's quite a bit of information on that um, to get a little closer to uh, the model e208s that we have here here's the brochure from uh, 1997 i believe it is so and the the e208 is shown here in the lower photo uh, prominently displayed just below the guy with the melting face so um, the, the text is kind of interesting 125 decibel live concerts in handy take-home size I like that here's the entire E series brochure um, floor standing bookshelf and then the center channel they go through some of the features and specifications uh, of them and uh, there's our our E208 specifically right there in the center. So two-way bookshelf, uh, 92 decibel sensitivity, and um, uh, these are obviously black ash. Everything I see pictured is black ash. I see they note they made them in in cherry as well, but I very seem to very rarely see that. So uh, another. If you're really interested in getting into the, more of the history of Sirwin Vega, um, check out Rossi Audio He on YouTube. Uh, he's got a playlist here of about 10 or 12 episodes, talking 10 videos, talking about the history of Sirwin Vega. Um, and uh, that is quite interesting as well. And it takes it all the way up till the end. At this point, there is, uh, you know, they went bankrupt. Uh, Sir Wynn Vega, the original company, went bankrupt. It was bought and sold several times. And uh, at this point, it is um, the mobile and the um, non-mobile parts of the company are owned by uh, CV, so CV Associates, I think it is, and uh, still operating out of L.A. So it survived all this time, um, and they're still pumping out new products. So that's uh, just a little bit of history for you and uh, more, to, lots more to learn, but I uh, thought I'd share a couple of those points. I've spared you the gory details of removing the old foam, cleaning off all the old glue, and um, getting them ready for the refoaming process. I've actually completed already one. You can see that one's done, this one's not. Uh, and what I thought we would do today is uh, show you a little technique that I use when doing refoaming to make sure that I get the voice coils centered. So on this other driver, we've already glued the new foam surround to the cone, and that's that's been dried and that's fine. That's that's ready. Now. What we have then is the the foam surround is not adhered yet to the the basket, so still still unattached. You can actually move the move them around as a pair, and I I uh, always do it this way first. Do the inner angled part of the foam to the cone first, let that dry, and that gives you full ability to make sure that you're centered. Now, when you when you do it, you make sure you put the foam on in a centered method, but we're going to show you a little technique here with a, uh, a tone generator, which uh, makes the rest of the process pretty foolproof. Uh, we've got the gasket, and we're going to use the gasket um, after we get the glue and adhesive on and get it pressed in, we'll, we'll use that to provide a little more security. Uh, what I've got set up here is a tone generator. Uh, I set the tone generator around 50 hertz, uh, sine wave, make sure you have everything set at a sine wave when you do this technique, set around 50 hertz. And what that's going to do, uh, once we activate that, uh, that will drive the cone in a normal fashion, but 
since the outer foam is not attached to the basket, we're going to get quite a bit of jitter and flutter and you're going to hear some resonance. So let me just turn that on. There it is. I can probably make it worse. Obviously we could also increase the, the volume as well. And there you can see the flutters happening. It's not enough to damage anything. I'm just going to back the back the level down so that I know it's still there, it's still happening. And watch what happens when I put the foam seal on. You know, that's going to dampen it, dampen it right down. So that's essentially the effect of the glue. The 50 hertz signal is still being generated. It's really low volume. I don't think, unless I put this right over, you might not be able to hear it. Yeah, you can, you can barely hear it. Take that off. And again, this is not the voice coil uh, rubbing. Uh, it's actually just the the foam seal is hitting the basket. I can make the voice coil rub. I'll get it off at an angle. I can probably generate a little rubbing. But this is a way to ensure that you're getting good centering and you don't have any voice coil rub of the cone moving up and down. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna turn off the tone generator. We'll apply the glue. And then before we adhere everything, we will turn that tone generator back on and uh, go from there. So we may just fast forward through this part. You don't necessarily need to see it all. Well, second only to watching glue dry is watching somebody apply glue. So, um, you know, there's really not that much to see here. You just lift the edge, you apply a section of glue, ensure that it's covering the area of the basket where the outer foam uh, seal, foam surround is going to seal against the basket. And then you just rotate, keep moving. Um, the glue is not adhered at this point, and that's, that's important. Um, it really won't fully adhere until we make it all the way around and then we do the final push down. And we're gonna do that with the tone generator running. That's the key. So we just, uh, there it is. Let's turn on our tone generator. work on getting this pressed down. You don't want to hear anything, right? If you hear something at this point, that means you've got a rub and you may have to quickly lift and reposition. So again, I just used this gasket to apply uniform pressure around the circumference of the outer edge of the foam use your finger you know this is going to take and by the way this is uh, let me turn up the volume here we're running a full let me turn up my amplifier now we've got a full 50 hertz tone playing and of course you don't hear any resonance you don't hear any voice coil rub. So we can declare success. I am now going to turn off the tone generator. You really don't need to have that on while you are allowing the glue to dry. You probably don't want it on. So we'll just come back every couple minutes here for the first 10 minutes and make sure that this is adhered securely. Meanwhile, we'll just use this gasket and apply a little pressure there. And that's all there is to it. So tone generator hooked up to your speaker. 
while you do that final gluing step, that's a good assurance that you uh, won't have a rubbing voice coil. You know, you can remove the dust caps and put some shims in and uh, then put on a new dust cap. But, or if you're very careful, you may be able to save the old dust cap. But uh, I found that, that this technique, in fact, I've done this probably a hundred times, I would say, and uh, on, on a variety of drivers. And one time, I think the third time I did it, uh, I had a little voice coil rub and I had to do it over. And that was before I started using the tone generator. Um, and once I've started doing tone generator, uh, no need. All right. So we'll let that dry. We'll come back, put this together, and uh, uh, show you the final product in a minute. Well, in a few hours. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to New Two Speakers.